to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ rejoice in the lord always and again i say rejoice Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4. We welcome you today to our study of the wonderful book of Philippians. Today's message is a, such a positive, encouraging message about the joy of Christianity. We want to encourage you to find your Bible if you don't already have it. We're going to look to the Word of God today as we study the book of Philippians together. Friend, we want you to know that our message is being brought to you by concerned Christians and individual congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the church, they would be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you, and you'd be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. Friend, we also want you to know that here at the Gospel of Christ, We'd love to help you in any way that we can spiritually. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about any things like that. We're concerned about people going to heaven. Check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From our website, you can access all of our free material. We've got video lessons, audio lessons, transcripts, study questions, just a wide variety of good Bible study materials, and we'd love for you to check that out. Also, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, it's available on our website as a digital download, or if you need it on a DVD or a CD, we'd be happy to send that to you free of charge. We'll even pay the shipping. You can log on to our website, fill out a media request form, or you can call us or write us, and we'll be glad to make that available to you. Let's turn our attention in our Bible to the beautiful book of Philippians. The major message of Philippians is such a powerful message about the joy of Christianity. The key word in the book of Philippians, which occurs some 16 times, is the word joy. And that key verse that we mentioned, Philippians 4 verse 4, God wants us to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Friend, it is, listen carefully today. This book emphasizes, puts an exclamation point on the idea that being a Christian is a joy. It's something you ought to be happy about and rejoice about. And because you're a Christian, you can smile and live the good life. Now, friend, when we talk about the joy of Christianity, sometimes you might think to yourself, well, you ought not to have to tell people that, but you know you do sometimes. If we're not careful, we can let circumstances or the world or life drag us down to the point that we lose our joy. You know, I heard one brother say one time, and I think there's some truth to this. He said, all too many times in the church of Lord Jesus Christ, we don't represent that joy. He said, in fact, sometimes we look like we've been baptized in pickle juice. Come out with a sour, smug, smirk, nothing to be happy about. My friend, that's the opposite of what Christianity is. It is a joy beyond measure to be a Christian. Paul said it this way in Philippians 1 verse 21. This is kind of encompasses the mentality that makes it a joy to be a Christian. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Friend, what makes Christianity a joy? If I'm going to be alive today, hey, it's about Christ. If I die and go on, well, it's just that much better. You're a winner either way. Let's turn our attention now to Philippians to uh, each of the four chapters. What we're going to do in this lesson is as we look at each of the four chapters in the book of Philippians, we're going to emphasize a different aspect of what makes Christianity a joy as Paul addresses this letter to these Christians. Chapter 1, we're going to realize that for to have the joy of Christianity, Christ must be the total purpose of our life. 
Chapter 2, Christ must be the pattern of life to have real joy. Chapter 3, Christ must be the prize of life. And then chapter 4, to have true joy, Christ must be the power of our life. Where's the source of power? Jesus is that source of power. All right, chapter 1, let's notice, to have true joy, Christ must be the purpose, the meaning of my life, each and every day. I want you to look at that passage we mentioned in Philippians chapter 1, and I want you to notice what Paul says in verses 19 through 21. Paul says this, For I know, Paul says, that this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed. But with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Then Paul says, But if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor, yet what I shall choose I cannot tell. For I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, nevertheless to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. He says, it's as though I've got such a tough decision to make. I want to stay here and help you, but I want to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. He says, though, my purpose is this. And friend, this is what you've got to get in your mind if you're going to find real joy. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. How are you going to have real happiness in this life? Friend, there are so many people who try it in so many wrong ways. Solomon tried it, did he not? He tried it in projects. Vanity, trying to catch the wind. He tried it in wine and women and lust of the flesh. What did he say about that? It's worthless, it's useless, it's vanity. Solomon tried everything you could imagine and none of it brought him purpose and happiness. Why? Real happiness, I hope you'll listen real carefully. Real happiness is not found in stuff and things and, and fulfilling the flesh and, and junk like that. Real happiness comes through complete devotion to a higher purpose. The Bible teaches in 2 Corinthians 5 verses 14 and 15, Paul said, the love of Christ compels us. Why? Because we judge thus, that if Christ died for all, then all died, and He died for all, that they who live should no longer live for themselves but live for Him who died for them and rose again. Friend, when I'm a Christian, it's no longer about the, the selfish, mundane things of this world which are going to perish with their using. I'm living for a higher calling. My purpose is bigger than me. Seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, that's bigger than me. Die daily for Jesus Christ, like Luke 9, 23. That's bigger than me. Be faithful unto death and you'll receive the crown of life. Friend, I, I've got to focus on something that has a, a higher calling and a grander purpose. So what is my purpose in life? My friend, the Bible mentions some things that help us clue into that. And we've seen that purpose here, but I want to illustrate that from some other passages as well. Why are you, why are you here? You know, that's one of the, probably one of the biggest philosophical questions is, why are we here? You know, the Bible answers that. Isaiah 43, verse 7, God said, Everyone who's called by my name, listen to this now, here's your purpose. Whom I created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Paul said it similarly in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. Whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. Why am I here? I'm here to glorify God. I'm here to honor Christ. I'm here to live for Him each and every day. That's the Christian's purpose. And friend, it is only found in that purpose. It's only in that purpose that the true treasure of happiness is really found. Friend, when I realize this, that means that I don't have to worry about so many things. You know, if I seek first the kingdom of God, do you know what God says? All these things are going to be provided for you. Food, shelter, and clothing. You put me first. And God says, let me worry about the rest. I have God's care. Cast all your cares upon Him. He cares for you. If I'm living for Christ, then to put it bluntly, so what if something happens in my life? 
so what if I perish? You can't get to heaven without dying anyway, can you? That's why Paul would say, I'm in between a rock and a hard place. I'm hard pressed. Listen to these words. I want to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. That was Paul's ultimate goal and his greatest joy. But to live for, live for Christ was also a wonderful gain. Now let's turn our attention to Philippians chapter 2. And as we think about this idea, friend, please realize in Philippians chapter 2, we're going to note that to have true joy, Christ not only must be the, the purpose of our life, He's got to be the pattern, the example that we follow each and every day. I want to direct your attention to Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse number 5. The Bible records, the, records these words for us. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be made equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of man, and of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. How am I going to find real joy in this life? Friend, you've got to figure out what you're going to follow. Really? You've got to figure out who you're going to follow. And friend, there's no greater happiness than following the pattern and the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want you to think about Christ's example with me. Think about the selfless mind of Jesus Christ, who committed no sin, nor was guile or deceit found in His mouth. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 21. Uh, the Bible says of Jesus in Mark chapter 12, verse 30, that He's done all things well. Mark chapter 5, the end of the chapter as well, mentions that beautiful statement. Mark 7, verse 37, the common people heard Him gladly. What a powerful person. When you think about people you want to follow, think about role models. You know, you can think of people that our children might want to follow. Maybe some superhero, some celebrity, maybe some uh, sports figure. But what about following someone who made it their life's goal to serve and to sacrifice for other people? Friend, you couldn't find a better role model than that. Listen to Jesus' words in Mark 10, verse 45. The Bible says, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. He went about doing good, healing those who are sick, feeding those who are hungry, helping the poor, and giving His life as an ultimate sacrifice and preaching the gospel, doing good to all men. When I make it, when I, when I finally figure out, when, I, when it clicks in my mind that, hey, life is so much bigger than what I might can acquire, than how much stuff I might can have, than how much fun I might can uh, do in this life, or how much lust of the flesh I might can fulfill. When, when we realize none of that's going to make me happy, when I realize there's something better, there's a better pattern to follow, friend, that's where true happiness is found out, uh, found, found out. I want you to think about the selflessness of Jesus that's mentioned in this passage. Being in the form of God, that is, He was deity. Jesus said, I and my Father are one, John 10, verse 30. He humbled Himself, became obedient to death. He came in the form of a man, became obedient to death, even the death on the cross. He was God. He came to this earth. He, he, he lived a pauper's life, as it were. Didn't even have a place to call His own. People laughed at Him. They mocked Him. They, they spit on Him. They called Him chief of the devils, Beelzebub. And in the end, they put Him on a, a, a cruel cross and He died in agony. Why? Because He knew life was more than about self. He had the most selfless example you can ever imagine. And friend, the Bible says, to this were you called. Because Christ also suffered and died for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in His footsteps. Now, I want you to think about that practically for just a moment. When you think about the things in this life that bring real joy, that's what we're talking about, right? True joy in Christianity. Do you find greater joy in fulfilling every desire you have or sometimes in something bigger? 
think you'll know it's something bigger. In fact, it's Jesus who said in Acts 20, verse 35, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, right? When I'll think to myself and have it as my mindset that serving others, following Christ's example, doing good, helping people, trying to save lost souls, when that's the example that I'm trying to follow and set, friend, you're going to find so much more happiness, so much more fulfilling, rewarding happiness than in the mundane things of this life that we often put our focus in. And so how do you find true happiness? You've got to have the right purpose. Philippians 1.21, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You've got to have the right pattern. Let this mind be in you. The selfless mind of Jesus must be our mindset every day. And then in Philippians chapter 3, we've got to realize that to have true happiness, I have to have my mind fixed on the right prize. What's your goal? What's your prize? What are you trying to achieve in the end? What's, what's the end result? When you cross the finish line, what is it you want to get? Our prize has got to be fixed on something bigger than this world also. Notice in your Bible, in Philippians 3, verses 12 following, the Scripture records this for us. Paul says, Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Friend, as we think about this idea, as we think about what it really means to be a Christian, as we think about, I want to have true joy in this life, what is that joy? Friend, that joy comes by having the proper prize in mind. When you run a race, you got to have something to motivate you. I'm going, to, I'm going to win this race to receive this crown, to receive this notoriety, whatever it may be. What is the prize the Christian life is giving? What is the prize of, of finishing the race as a Christian? Well, friend, the prize is heaven. Paul said, I fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. In the future, there's a crown laid up for me, but not for me only but for all those who've loved His appearing. Friend, when I think about getting that prize and, and how we attain that, not only does the prize motivate me, don't get me wrong, more than anything in the world, I hope you want to go to heaven. Do you understand the beauty, how wonderful heaven's going to be? God's going to be there. We pray, our Father who art in heaven, Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, is at the right hand of God in heaven right now. Hebrews 1, verses 3 and 4. Saints of old, our loved ones who've been faithful, every blessing that you can imagine, the beauty and the splendor of heaven is, is unimaginable. No sin, death, pain, crying. Satan isn't there. More than anything, I hope you want to go to heaven. But friend, that prize has to motivate us to do some things, to keep running the race. Think about this for just a second. Paul says, for this to happen, for me to gain hold of that prize, I've got to do a couple of things. He says, I've got to forget about the past. Friend, I hope you'll listen real carefully to what I'm saying to you today. If you're going to have joy, you've got to let the past go. You cannot be shackled by things in your life that you may have done. If you're a child of God, and you're going to have true happiness, you've got to let the past be in the past. The Bible teaches we've got to put our former life behind us, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. If you have been forgiven, and as a Christian you have, Hebrews 8 verse 13, God says, I'll be merciful to their sins and their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. If God has forgotten and forgiven, forgiven and forgotten, we need to do the same thing sin is a horrible taskmaster. It'll drag you down. Can't let your past life dictate your future. Put the past behind you. And then Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press on. You've 
to be happy as a Christian, to have that as your prize. Not only do you have to put the past in the past, you've got to take a step forward every day and grow as a Christian. If anyone was in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all has become new, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The Bible says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. Friend, I want to encourage you today. As you think about your joy, I want you to ask yourself, do you have the joy you ought to Christians ought to be the happiest people in all the world. Happy not just here, but here, inside. We ought to have a joy and a peace and a tranquility that nothing can replace. If you're struggling with that, then ask yourself, have I really let go of the past? Have I taken care of the past, number one? Have I become a Christian? Have I repented of things that I know I've done that are not right? And if it's in the past, friend, you've got to let it go. And you've got to put one foot in front of the other and live for Jesus every day. And then there's a fourth thing from the book of Philippians that you've got to do to have real joy, and it's this. To have true joy as a Christian, I've got to have the proper source of power in my life. Without the right power, you're not going to go anywhere. You've got to have power. You've got to have gasoline in your car. You've got to have uh, ba batteries got to be charged up. You've got to have your, something plugged into the right socket if it's going to have power. What about the Christian? For him to have true joy, to exhibit what he ought to, to, to illuminate, magnify, and live for Christ every day, he has got to be plugged into the source, the right source that will bring happiness. What is that source? Philippians 4.13 tells us. Would you look at that with me? Look in Philippians chapter 4, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 13. The Scripture says this, I can do all things, through Christ. Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Friend, I want you to notice what Paul did not say. Paul did not say, I can do all things. The period does not end. The sentence does not end there. Sometimes that's our mindset. I think sometimes we think to ourselves, I've got to solve this problem. I've got to figure it out. I'm, I'm on my own. I'm a big boy. I've got to handle this. Well, wait a minute now. That's not the way the Christian works. That's not how the Christian has to look at it. I don't have to figure it all out by myself. I don't have, the, have to have the answer for every problem. I don't have to know everything about everything, every equate. No. You know what I've got to know? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Christians need the power through Christ to do God's will. You see, Jesus has that power. I want you to think about the power of Christ for just a moment. You know, we say, okay, do all things through Christ. He has the power to help us. Just stop and fathom that power for a moment. The Bible tells us that Jesus created the worlds. Colossians 1, He was there at creation. He was an agent of creation. Colossians 1, verses 15 through 18. All things were created through Him, for Him, by Him. He is above all things. How powerful is Christ? created the world. How powerful is Christ? I want you to think in Mark chapter 5 for just a moment. The disciples are in that tumultuous sea of Galilee and water's coming in the boat. Looks like they're going to drown. Where's Jesus? He's asleep. They wake Him. Lord, we're about to perish. Do you not care? He gets up and the word, peace be still. It's like a sea of glass. What kind of power would it take to do that? What kind of power would it take to call forth to a dead man who had been dead for many days. Lazarus, come forth. And bound with grave clothes, that man, that dead man, came back to life. Friend, the Lord has the power to help me and you through anything that we're facing in this life. I want you to hear the words of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken us except such as is common to men. But God, who is faithful with the temptation, will make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I don't have the answer to every problem. I don't even know what every problem is going to be. I know I can't solve it myself. But you know what I do know? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He'll help me. He'll strengthen me. 
He'll give aid to His children providentially, Romans 8, verse 28, and with His help, there's nothing that Christians can't accomplish. And so, friend, as we think today about the beautiful book of Philippians, the powerful message is this. We can have true joy. Remember these words. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. No matter how dark the day may be, no matter how difficult the situation, no matter how much despair the moment may carry, God and His hope, His help, and His strength can bring joy to that. doesn't mean that you're going to walk around with a smile all the time, but you know what it does mean? In the end, Christ and Christians win. In the end, you have that prize as your eternal reward. Jesus said it this way. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to Myself that where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it, not to, were it not so, I would have told you. Don't you want to go to heaven? Don't you want to live with God forever? How wonderful that'll be. Friend, if that's going to be ours, here's what we've got to do. I've got to have the right purpose in life. To live as Christ, to die as gain. I've got to have the right pattern. Let this mind be in you. The selfless mind of Christ must be my mind. I've got to focus on the right prize. Press toward the prize of the upper call of God, and I've got to access the right source of power. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you're not a child of God, friend, more than anything, we'd encourage you to become one. Have you heard the message of Jesus Christ, that He is the way, the truth, and the life? John 14, 6. Do you believe that He is the Savior of the world? John 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to turn from sin and turn to God? Acts 3, verse 19. Would you be baptized? Would you confess Him as Lord and Savior and be baptized for the remission of your sins? Here's what Peter said. Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and then would you rise out of that watery grave to walk in newness of life. Romans 6 verse 4. May God help each of us to have the joy of Christ in our lives every day and may we live in such a way that one day heaven really will be our eternal home. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your walk. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as video and audio from our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. You can also reach us by emailing mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call us at 844-6-GOSPEL or write to us at the address on your screen. You can also get our Gospel of Christ app on your handheld devices for those on the go. Gospel of Christ.